It has been a really busy season on the homestead. I've been busy with the garden, with harvesting and preserving. Every year I make a goal to grow at least one new thing to help expand my knowledge. This year I took on way more than just one thing. I added things like onions, potatoes, and many other things I have not grown before or not grown successfully. And not only did I add new items, but I added a lot of square feet to the garden. I will definitely be reevaluating what we grow next year. Thank you 50 f fam for watching along on my journey. I have spoken to several, several of you in person and I have been told that I should make a how-to video. So even though this is not really a how-to channel today, I will be showing you guys how to can a simple bread and butter pickle recipe. I hope you guys enjoy. I want to start off by saying that bread and butter pickles are by far the best pickles for home canning. At least in my personal opinion, they are, taste great. First, you need to start with washing your cucumbers. I think that's kind of a given, but I don't want to skip that step here. Next, you need to slice your pickles into one quarter inch rounds. <laughs> you can see here I'm having an ADD moment where I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> but anyway. If you have a mandolin, that makes it super easy, but it is definitely not required. It makes these cool little wavy shapes on there, but you do not have to have a mandolin. You can use a plain old knife. There is a trick to making sure you have crunchy pickles, and that is to cut off the blossom end of your cucumber. If you look at your cucumber, you can see the end where the vine was and the end where the blossom was. You always want to cut off about an inch from where the blossom was. That makes a huge difference in the crispiness of your pickles. So always make sure you cut that end off. Onions are added to bread and butter pickles to enhance the flavor. So you chop up some onions and add that in. Next, you'll be taking salt and putting it over the mixture of onions and cucumbers. This process cannot be skipped. The salt takes out any extra moisture out of the cucumbers, making them crispier when you can them. If you want a crunchy, crispy pickle, do not skip this step. You need to let it sit for about two hours before you go and make your brine. Give all that a good stir. Make sure that you get the salt down and through everything and then cover it and let it sit for two hours. While you do that, it is time to wash and sanitize your jars. So get your jars out, give them a really good scrub using hot water, and then you can boil your jars for about 10 minutes to make sure that they're sanitized. Once your two hours are up, you wanna give them a good rinse to get all that salt off. So here you can see that I am rinsing them all out and then I will rinse them off really, really good. Make sure there's no salt left over. You don't want salty pickles, so make sure that you give them a really good rinse. This is where you make your brine. The brine is made of vinegar, sugar, and spices. You mix all that up together and you bring it to a boil. The spices include turmeric, celery seed and mustard seed now this big bag of mustard seed you can get on amazon for about five dollars that is about a fraction of the price that you can get at the store at the store you can get a mini bottle for five dollars here you can get a whole bag so be prepared ahead of time and order in advance once you got all this in your pot get it good and mixed up and heated and then you add your cucumbers and onions to this brine and boil it for a few minutes before it's ready to go in your jars. Here you can see it's hard to tell but there are jars in there sanitizing so you want to pull those out and get them ready to fill. This can sometimes be a bit tricky with the steam and the hot boiling water. You have to get it a good grip on it and tip them over to get the water out. I am obviously no expert at any of this. I am just showing you guys what I know, but I will tell you that these grabbers right here that I'm using, you can get them anywhere, but the black side is the handle and the colored part is the part that you grab the jar with. I can't tell you how many YouTube videos I've watched on how to do something and they're not even holding the grabber right. Now. 
That was just a little side note of information there. Now you want to fill your jars. Fill them to where there's a half an inch headspace. That is at the bottom of where the lid goes. You can see that there's a neck on these jars. It's right at where the neck starts. Fill them up with the pickles and then if there's any excess space, you need to go back and grab brine and fill it up with liquid up to the neck. Make sure to wipe your rims. This will ensure that your lids have good grip to the top of the jar. You can use water on a paper towel or a little bit of vinegar on the paper towel. Make sure that you get no sticky residue left over. You can see here I noticed that I spilt brine on my stove and it burnt great. I'll have to deal with that later. When I was sanitizing my jars, I also sanitized my lids. Now, there are some lids that require you to boil the lids ahead of time. The rubber gasket there that you can see around the edge, some of them need to be heated up to in order to work properly. Most new lids do not require this, but check your packaging to see if it says that it's required or not. For me, it is not required, so I am not boiling these lids. I'm putting them straight on. Now, I did want some of my pickles to be spicy, so I'm adding some red pepper flakes to a couple of the jars here before I seal them up. That is a safe additive that does not change the safety of the pickles. You don't want to be adding anything crazy that will make it unsafe. This one is approved. So you seal your jars, put the rings on three finger tight. That just means use your, three, your two main fingers and your thumb to tighten it down. This ensures that you don't tighten it down too tight. You do want air to be able to come out, but no fluid to be able to come out. And you put these in your water bath canner and you process them for 10 minutes. Make sure you don't start your timer until you actually see boiling water. Once you see the boiling water, you put your timer on for 10 minutes. Once that's up, you can pull them out. As soon as you pull them out, shortly thereafter, you will start to hear the pings and the dings. This ensures, lets you know for sure that they seal. I ran through all this rather quickly, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. I wanted to keep this short and sweet. The how-to videos are not my normal thing, but I thought it would be fun, and I had a lot of you guys requesting it, so here it is. Next week, I will be doing more preserving. I have basil that I'm going to be turning into pesto and jalapeno jelly. So if any of that interests you, it will be on the next video. I am in straight on preserving mode. That's about the only thing I have going on in my life right now. So that is what you'll be seeing a lot of. Thank you 5OF fam for being here and watching me. Please like, give it a subscribe if you haven't already.